What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Of course, you guys know it's really actually Tuesday. But I'm about to try to get this done really quick because it is 3.30 here on the West Coast. And I do have a lot of things to do because tomorrow I leave for New York. So I do have to go to Sam's Club and get some things. I do need to do another wig video. I do need to pack my clothes. I do need to hang up my clothes. Um, I got a lot to do. So I really wasn't going to do this real tour. And I got to freaking find my hair. Redo my lashes. So, yeah, I do have a lot to do. I am bringing my mom back home, unfortunately. You know, she wasn't going to move here just like that. She came to visit and she really actually did enjoy herself. And that two weeks went by super duper fast. So I'm totally going to miss her. Um, I will see her again in July, but she won't be here. But she will come back here in October. So, you know, I hope that she really does like it enough to where she wants to move here. So other than that, I'm not really feeling that great. Um, I'm not sure if it's my allergies or a cold. But either way, it's the same type of symptoms. And I know this much. I was sneezing my ass off yesterday, like seriously sneezing. So we're just going to jump into this really quick because like I said, I have so much shit to do that uh, I'll never get done with it. So if you guys have a real talk that you want me to talk about on my channel, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put your in the subject line real talk so that way when i search it up and i look for it i'll know what to find also make sure that you change the names of your characters or subjects in the email so that way you know in case somebody you know watches me they know you ain't talking about their ass okay so other than that let's get into this real talk um oh okay first of all about my car because you guys know the bitch down the street hit my car so they told my car to get fixed <clears throat> And they try to total it out. They try to total it out and say that the price of the, the repairs was more than the car was worth. On my little 2004 Chevy Malibu. Like, I know the car is 14 years old, but it drives like it's fucking brand new. And I keep it in good shape, okay? So, I'm always getting the maintenance. I'm always getting it washed. Um, the paint looks great on it. The only issue is the inside panels that's on the door, like the little leather strips. They came peeling off. Other than that, the car runs magnificent, okay? It runs, like, really good for a 14-year-old car. So, um, it was the back had the back bumper light and the bumper was dented in and they try to say that was worth more than the car to repair so they tried to offer me twenty seven hundred dollars for my car and i was just like hell no i want my fucking car so they returned my car and they also gave me a check for like twenty three hundred so i was able to take it to miguel and he was like you lucked out april because this is only like five hundred dollars worth of damages and he will have it fixed. So thank you, bitch, down the street, okay? Because you hit my car, but you didn't even do shit to it like that. And you got me a check. So I like free money. Well, not even free money, but I really wish that she wouldn't have hit my car because I love my car. Like, that is my baby. Like, I have another truck, but I love my Malibu. And some people may be like, girl, that car is over. It, it doesn't even matter. I love it to pieces. Like, it runs like it's new. And it gets me zip, zip, zip out of traffic. So, yes to that. Okay, so I got it back today, and I dropped it off to Miguel. Also, my daughter Tati, she got her first car. She um, bought her first car. I'm so proud of her. She got herself a Ford Focus. Um, it's an older model, but it's good for her first year car of driving, so that way she can learn how to drive. Because, you know what? They think that they are perfect drivers, these, these young kids. They're like, I'm the perfect driver. Girl, how are you the perfect driver if you ain't even got a driver's license? Like, that's not the perfect driver, hunty. No, and I'm not getting in the car with you, and neither is my grandson. I've already told her that you're not taking my grandson anywhere in that car. So, yeah. And also, before I even get into this video, I know you guys are like, girl, you was all over the place. I'm not really all over the place, but I do have a package that I did get delivered yesterday in my post office box, which I was so excited about because I do like to get stuff. I love to get stuff. But when people send my grandson stuff, I was like, what? I was so happy so i definitely have to show you guys this real quick okay so i got this in the post office and i definitely wanted to share it with you guys it's from 
Hunter's Toy Kingdom. Okay, so when I shook it up, I was like, I didn't buy no toy. The first thing that I was thinking about when I was like, Hunter's Toy Kingdom, I was like, ooh, what did they send me? You know, Dirty Minds, I think alike. Okay, so, I, you know, it said toy, okay? Nobody ever sends me any toys, so I was obviously thinking, like, it is an adult toy. And then I was, like, shaking, and I was like, that is not adult toy in there. So, anyway, I opened the box, and I was like, oh, my God. This is not even for me. This is for my Tinky Man. So I was like so excited because Tinky never gets anything in the post office box. Like he's got like one thing before. And when I seen this, we, I was so happy. I showed Tati. I was like, look what Tinky got. He got something. He got something in the mail. So it's a C and spell. Okay. Isn't this so cool? Like, I don't even see them making stuff like this anymore, but this is by the brand Melissa and Doug, and I think this was, like, sold at Toys R Us because, if I remember, I did see something, but I love, like, these older toys, like, because they're classics, and you can teach your kids everything. Not everything has to be electronic and gadgets, but he's only three, and this is amazing for him he loves to talk about school buses okay but yes i was so excited when i got this helps teach learn helps teach letter and picture recognition as well as letters and sounds so i'm gonna give this to him today it's wood okay so for one i was so excited about that because he loves getting stuff so he is going to love that Plus, okay first of all I, when i first went back to new york in october i had bought tinky a cab a little yellow metal um, die cast cap car and he loves it it was like an older style model you know but it was an old new york city cap yellow cap and it was an older style car and then when i came back at this time home i also bought him another yellow cap he i don't know i buy him die cast cars all the time because they're collectibles but for some reason he likes the caps i don't know if it's because of the color so this time around okay why did the same company, Hunter's Toy Kingdom, send Tinky a cab? Okay, how cute is that? He was so excited. Okay, when I gave him the newest cab, so I cannot wait to give him this one because he loves when the doors open. So the doors open. I didn't give it to him yet, but I know he's gonna love this because when I came home from New York City this time, I brought him another cab, and it was a model like this one, um, and the doors open and the trunk open too, but the only issue he has with that cab now is he lost a little top piece to it. So, thank you so much. I don't know what it is with him, but he loves these die-cast toys. Uh, these cars and he loves taxi cabs. I don't know why. I think it might have something to do with the color because I got him a UPS truck because he likes to get my packages when they come. I got him a New York City Transit Authority bus that was die cast. I got him <coughs> two cabs, a tour bus, and he just likes the cabs the most and like some Corvettes and stuff. He likes the cabs the best. So I cannot wait to get this to him. I'm gonna put it right outside the door so when he wakes up, he'll be like, Mama. And they also sent him this cute little bag so he can carry his stuff around. He, I'm going to put, you know what, I'm going to put his little box and his wooden box and his toys right in there. And I'm going to put it outside of his door because he's taking a nap right now. So this is super duper cute. See, he likes stuff. He's going to be so excited. And then also from Mumsy, she got the Melissa and Doug stained glass made easy heart and rainbow. So she has 80 stained glass stickers. She loves to do arts and crafts. So when she seen this, she was so excited. But I said, can I just at least show it in a video and say thank you? So she did get this. And she got one of her favorite animes, and I did not even know that, but it's Sailor Moon, and the bracelet, charm bracelet, is so freaking pretty. So she was so happy when she seen this. This, I think, was her favorite because she loves Sailor Moon, I loves it. And she also loves freaking T.Y. Beanie Boos, okay? So she got a bag. And it's funny because she has the penguin, she has, um, she has the penguin, or what's the penguin? The penguin, she has the little husky. She has this cat here, and she has this little poodle, this little poodle and the owl. So she has, like, mostly all of these characters on this back. So she's going to definitely be using this this summer to put her bathing suit in. And also, I think this is for Mumsy because it looks like it would fit her as well. She got a shirt, Soho, New York City, with 
bling on it sequence in New York City. I told Mumsy it was for her because she likes to get clothes too. So I definitely told her it was for her. She was like so excited, like that's for me too. So yes. So I want to say a special thank you so, 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 so much from Hunter's Toy Kingdom. Um, I really, really appreciate this. Um, I cannot wait for Tinky to see his stuff because Mum's already seen hers and she is so, he is going to be so excited about this. Like for real, he never really gets anything in the mail. So this is going, I mean, like I buy him stuff all the time, but for him to get something in the mail, it's going to be so surprising. So I'm going to put it in this bag right here. for him so when he wakes up from his nappy he'll have a little surprise right by his door and he'll see that and he'll be like oh, for me he loves surprises so yes thank you so so much and this was from I hope I say your name right correctly Naisha Naisha Na Nakisha Nakisha I hope I said your name right, girl. If I didn't, I am so sorry, but I wanted to say thank you so, so much. I will definitely post their information below to their website because, you know, I hate the fact that Toys R Us is going out of business. And, you know, I like to see places that sell, like, classic toys like that and such because and everything has to be electronic. So I will definitely be posting the information below. If I forget, please make sure to remind me, but it is called Hunter, like, Hunt, Hunter Toy Kingdom com. Okay, and they do have hours of operation and everything like that. So I'll be making sure to put their info below. They have these cute little business cards as well. So let's get into this real talk, you guys. And on that note, see you in a minute. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Okay, you guys, so like I said, I'm going to make these quick. I'm only going to do two today. My mouth is dry. I really don't feel good. Hey, April. First, I want to say thank you for being who you are and faithfully uploading videos on your channel. But my real talk question scenario, my name is Diamond, 26 years old, and his name is Lawrence. 29 years old. I met Lawrence six years ago after a festival downtown in my city. And honey, it was like a scene out of a movie. I watched him walk by and he watched me as I watched him. He walked back down to where I was and we chopped it up for a minute and then exchanged numbers in front of our friends. And it was like the world stopped. We forgot they were even there. We texted for a few weeks and he asked me on a date. We went to dinner, played some arcade games, and walked through the park and did nothing sexual for a long time. I was young and just had my heart broken, so for the longest, I made him meet me in a park if he wanted to hang out. Plus, I was living with my mother, and he was still living with his parents. April, the man is fine, okay? And on our first date, when I hugged him, I felt his penis, so I knew that he was working with something. So she didn't literally go out and reach it. She like felt it against her. During that summer, I wasn't ready for a full on sex. So we just did oral and nothing more. Lawrence got pushy about having sex and I was feeling pressured. So I was considering letting him go. But before we got to that point, I was performing oral on him one night and his phone rang and it was another girl calling. And I cut things off with him right then. I even popped up at his job the next day with everything he ever gave me to give back to him. Over the past six years, I've been I've seen Lawrence around town, maybe twice, but never communicate with him until I recently ran into him, and he is even finer now. I looked him up on social media, and that's where it all began. I've always been sexually attracted to him, and that hasn't changed. I just admit I'm curious as to how sex with him would be. He, we messaged each other off social media for a while and decided to meet up. I'm not sure why I didn't ask him if he was single while we were messaging, but I asked in person. And of course, his fine ass ain't single. Someone has snatched him off the market, but it's hard to tell. He has no recent posts with the girl on his social media. So when I grilled him on it, I found her page. And when you go to her page, he's all on her page. He claimed things are not perfect in his relationship and that they are going through a rough patch, but they are still together. I was crushed because I'm looking at this man like I'm older and more comfortable 
with my body and I'm trying to get on, I'm trying to get on down, LOL. But he's in a relationship. After we met up, he is constantly calling, texting, trying to FaceTime. I don't answer. And he keeps saying he wants to do things we used to do. I won't do you wrong. I will never come over and put it down and leave you alone. I'm going to show you how it's going to be. No one would know but us. Like, did this man just ask me to be a side chick? Honestly, I feel ashamed because I thought about it. I'm single, lonely, and the guy I really want to be with doesn't live here. So I don't get consistent attention and affection. I am hiding the fact that I am even contemplating sleeping with this man and seeing him on a regular from a, my friends and family. So I can't get there. Wait, hold on. I'm hiding the fact that I am even contemplating sleeping with this man and seeing him on a regular from my friends and family, so I won't get their opinion. This is tough for me. Normally, I would be like, hell no, but we are extremely sexually attracted to each other to the point where I feel like I'm going to scream when I'm around him, and he has a physical reaction, if you know what I mean. Just look it at me, it feels like, uh, just looking at me, it feels like a drug. Oh, when he looks at her, it feels like a drug. So what do you think? Do you think there's a possibility Lawrence and his girl would actually break it off? And what do I do about the intense sexual physical attraction? Please reply as soon as possible. And thank you so much, Diamond. So basically, Diamond is um, back in touch with an old flame from like six years ago named Lauren who's three years older than her, they met, I guess he's that fine that when you see him, your jaw just drop open, your panties get wet, and you just be like, dang, girl, did you see that? Like, I don't know, but the way she's describing him, that's like, that's how she's feeling about dude. Well, they never had sex because she just didn't want to, plus she had a heartbreak. But instead of having sex, they performed oral on each other. Um, but she didn't want to take it so far. First of all, I'm not about to keep sucking your dick and you ain't fucking me. And you ain't, nah, we not about to do that. Like, no way. Uh uh. Like, who who does that? Like, I'm sorry. I know TMI, but I'm not about to keep sucking your dick and we ain't about to get it popping. Like, are you crazy? Like, for real? I'm not about to keep doing that. And, like, I ain't about to let you keep eating my stuff and my cootie and you ain't about to stick it in. Girl, girl, bye. Not at all. Not about to happen. So, I'm just saying, that's where you messed up at. Like, girl, why are you going to put the dick in your mouth? You're going to put the D in your mouth and not even put it, get a piece. And you're going to let him put the in his mouth and not get, girl, what's wrong with you? I mean, but you know, to each his own. I mean, because I, listen, oral sex is great, but there's got to be something afterward. That's like, that's like the, the meal. And then you get the dessert afterwards. Like, I'm saying, like, I'm not about to keep sucking your dick and I don't get a piece. That's not about to happen. Like, let's just all be grown. Y'all bitch, bitches don't act like y'all don't suck. Like, like, for real, bitches don't act like y'all don't do the oral thing like she's just explained. But if y'all did, wouldn't y'all want the rest of the, of the dessert with it? Like, hello? That's just like you just treated yourself but untreated yourself. Like, you just, you just like, why would you joke on you? Why would you do that to yourself? Like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, you you went from A, but you didn't even make it to B. Like, girl, you're supposed to finish that off. But okay, whatever. So they stopped seeing each other because while she was sucking him off, some bitch called. Like, okay, I don't know. She seen the phone while she was sucking him off or while she was sucking him off, he answered the phone. Either way, like, if he answered the phone while he was sucking his dick, I'm sorry, girl. I would have bit the shit out of that motherfucker. But... They they stopped seeing each other, and she's seen him again recently. They got back in touch with each other. She's found out that he's got a girl, and the girl has Lawrence's picture all over her Facebook social media page. He ain't got the girl's picture nowhere on it. But what Lawrence is telling her is that, well, we're going through a rough patch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Don't niggas always say that? Like, I mean, not always. They'll either say they don't have a girlfriend or that they're going through a rough patch or some other bullshit. Girl, don't believe the hype. Like, don't believe the hype. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. Remember that song, y'all? I know y'all pretty sure y'all remember that song, but 
if a dude tell y'all he going through a rough patch in his relationship, don't believe that shit. Like, even if he is really going through a rough patch in his relationship, what makes it okay for him to step out on the girl or the wife that he's with? If you already going through some rough shit and you want to step out, nigga, you're going to make it even worse for yourself. Like, what sense does that make? But if he's telling you, you know, he ain't going to come over and lay it down on you and then just disappear, let me tell you something, shorty. First of all, <clears throat> my mouth is so dry. But first of all, if he's telling you that he's going to come and put it down, like, you know what I'm telling you. You know what he mean when he say he's going to come through and put it down. He's about to put the D down on her. She already got somebody that's not in the same town, but she, so she don't get that much affection and attention like she wants to, the person that she really wants to be with. But the nigga Lawrence, who's so fine, he even finer, you know, he told her he gonna come through and put the D on her, and nobody has to know. Sweetheart, first of all, would you like that shit if it was done to you? Like, on some real shit, girl, would you really like if a nigga did that shit to you like you know what i'm saying diamond like a diamond in the rough bitch would you like if your man stepped out on you told some next bitch that oh we having a rough patch and then start fucking with another bitch and you find out your man had a side chick like you wouldn't like that shit some of y'all bitches be like oh i wouldn't care don't fucking front and don't lie don't be nobody's side chicks because first of all if you know you a side chick then you ain't nothing but a fucking thought not a thought, but a thought, okay? If you didn't know that you was the side chick, then that's one thing, okay? But when you accept the fact that you a side chick and you know you a side chick, bitch, you ain't got no morals and values and you ain't got no self-worth and no self-respect for yourself. And then I'll be damned and I wouldn't even feel bad for you if the bitch came along and fucked your ass up because you intentionally wanted to be the side chick, okay? And do unto others as you would want do, done to you. Like, don't do no shit to no next bitch because you want they man. There is a whole lot of dick out there in this world, okay? He might not be finer than that Dick Lawrence. And you know something, sweetheart? There's a million men in the world. I guarantee you that there's a one that's way better looking than Lawrence ass, okay? He just one in a million, all right? And for me, honestly, if a dude was to say something like that to me and want me to be his side chick, I would have no respect for him because he has no respect for you. If he asking you to be on a DL with him, then he ain't got no respect for you. He First of all, he ain't got no respect for his girl. So I could imagine if they do have a rough patch, I wonder fucking why. It's probably because of this dirty dick nigga. And two, I would wouldn't even fuck with that nigga. He got a girl at home. How many other side chicks do he got? Like, let's be for real. So, which means if he got a girl at home, then he got another side chick on the side, which means this nigga got a dirty dick, and who knows what type of fucking venereal diseases he's carrying the fuck around, or baby mama dramas he got going on, or what type of behind-the-scenes lifestyle he lived, because you really don't know Lawrence like that. Because the last time you knew the nigga was living with his parents, and he probably ain't no more, but you don't know, he probably is house-hopping, hoe-hopping, dick slapping and and really popping like i'm just saying you know what i'm saying like i'm trying to think have i ever been anybody's side chick like because i have never i'm 44 about to be 44 years old and i don't remember i, I know when i was like like 20 um i wasn't even his side chick he had like Four, five, four baby mamas, and he wasn't with none of them. But the one girl, she was still in love with this nigga, but he had a baby the next building and another one after that. I wasn't trying to be one of his baby mama, but did she get mad and um, she attacked me. When I say this bitch attacked me, this bitch motherfucking attacked me. I'll never forget. I was walking home one day into the projects, and her ass seen me walking and was like, oh, you're fucking my baby father. I'm just like. Oh, God. Here comes this big rhino, bitch. All right. When I say she's a big bitch, she was big. Did the bitch pin me against the fucking fence and bite the shit out of me? Like, the bitch bit me, okay? I had to go to the hospital and get a tennis shot. And did the, I think I think she got in trouble, too. I think I think because my mom came with me to the hospital. Um, yeah, the bitch bit me. Like, I think I think I pressed charges on her because the bitch bit me. I had teeth marks in my motherfucking skin, so I had no choice but to press charges against her because the hospital had already called the fucking police. But I, other than that, I don't recall being anybody's side chick, okay? Um, 
Because if I find out you got a girl and you was messing around, that I will quickly. Girl, let me tell you about your man. Okay. And I've I've had that issue before, like, then this is probably like 25 years ago. This dude tried to talk to me. This is before my husband. And um he tried to talk to me and I gave him my number. And this is way before our so well, cell phone's been out a minute, but I didn't have no cell phone. And I don't recall if he had one either. But he called me and it was probably like a two, three minute conversation. And then his his girlfriend called me like the next day or maybe a couple days later. I think her name was Betty or Bertha, some some of the, one of those names. And she called me. She said she she did she star sixty nine a number or so I can't remember how she found my number. But either way, when she called me, I was like, I'm not messing with your man. We're um I forgot what 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 I told her, but then I felt bad about it. And within five minutes later, I star sixty nine her and I let her know. You know what? Your man has been calling my phone, trying to come over here to my apartment, but he doesn't know where I live. But he's been trying to get with me, so I did tell her because I think that that's right. You that's what you're supposed to do. Like you know, what I'm saying. However, some bitches won't believe this shit. Like, oh, you just mad because you ain't got no man. You just want my man. man, 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 man. Bitch, don't nobody want your man if he's a fucking dirty dog. So, Diamond, ask yourself the simple question. Would you like if somebody did that to you? Would you like if a bitch slid up in your man's DM and started trying to get with him and was giving him some pussy? Like, would you really like that? No, especially if he knew, if she knew he had a girl, you'd be ready to chop her motherfucking head off. Don't, don't be nobody's victim and don't be nobody's thought because that nigga don't really think highly of you. He don't really think that highly of you if he's trying to fuck you and that's all he's really trying to do. He ain't trying to whine and dine you. He, the nigga ain't taking you out. Trust me when I tell you, he's not taking you out. If he do take you to the movies, bitch, he's taking you to the movie theater in the old people neighborhood where nobody fucking goes and he's taking you to the stores where nobody visits. He's not taking you out in public no and if that's what you're looking for then honey you're not about to get that and if you're just looking for somebody to fuck then i'm against again once again you will get that however what else you getting with it somebody's venereal disease somebody else's coochie on his mouth somebody else's coochie on his dick like you know what i'm saying all the drama with his girl and her little posse and crew and whatever other side chicks he got like why would anybody want to be some side chick but you know what i get it some of these bitches today are all for being a side chick. Like, I'm not really sure why. I don't understand the benefits. What do you... Do, does it come with, like, medical benefits and, like, a 401k, a pension? Like, what the fuck does it come with being a side chick? Because I know me. I like a relationship that is just me and you like me and my husband have it's just about me and you and nobody the fuck else like if i was to find out that my husband was cheating on me i will crack his head open okay like literally you ask him i will crack that nigga head open so fucking hard i will be on the next thing smoking out this motherfucking state of arizona knocking on that nigga door like what's up i might not knock i might kick that motherfucker in however i'm getting up in that piece and i'm fucking I'm fucking his ass up, okay? And then I'm going to leave. And that's going to be that. But why would you want to be in a relationship when you just want to fuck with a nigga? There's somebody that you already like and you, you want to be with, but he's in another state. Sweetheart, be patient. The same thing goes for me. The person that I love is in another state, and I go and I visit him, and I speak to him daily. That's what you need to do. If you so motherfucking horny, this sweetheart, let me tell you something. That's what God gave you two of these for. And a motherfucking cell phone with some porn collection on that shit. And a fucking glass dildo and a toy and whatever the fuck else you need. These things, when you're done with them, you just wash them off and just do what you need to do. With a nigga like that that have a side chick, first of all, you felt his dick between by his pants. Honey, let me tell you something. The nigga probably had on jeans. And let's just think about it. The jean material in the front is kind of packing and it's kind of bulky. Just because you think he might pack be packing, that nigga can have like a little short dick. And that's all you felt right there. And then when you get down to the dirty, the ditty, um, the nitty gritty, you just really pissed off and depressed and upset and like, damn, I just fucking lowered myself moral values to fuck this nigga who got a girl for his whack ass dick. Like, dang. Why would you even want to go through that? Like, it's not even worth it. Like, get your own man, okay? I tell y'all bitches that all the time. Get your own man. Because I know if a bitch even look too hard at mine, 
I know I'm 44 and I try to be very, very like goal oriented. I try to be very positive and I try to be very mature. But if a bitch look too hard, I'm going to knock your fucking eyeballs out the socket. Straight up. I don't play those games when it comes to my fucking man. I will knock your motherfucking eyeballs out the socket and your teeth might be flying the fuck along with them shit. Okay? Diamond, get your own man. Okay? Stop worrying about this nigga because, listen. There is so many fish in the sea. That nigga is not worth the time of day. Look at him. He's a dog. He straight up is letting you know that he's a hound dog. And all he's out for is some pussy. And I'm sorry, but I really wouldn't want to fuck with nobody that just wants me for some coochie. Like, some women, listen, we have to have some self-worth. And it starts today. This motherfucking shit starts today. Have some self-respect and some self-worth and get it together. <coughs> Be no side chick to nobody. Like, hmm. I'll cut a nigga's lips off if you fucking try to tell me and ask me to be your side chick. For real. Like, that's just disrespect. All right. Let Diamond know. What do y'all think about being a side chick? What do y'all think? What would you do if your nigga had a side chick? How would you feel? Let her know. And we're going to move on to the next. Okay. Dear Miss April, good day to you again. First, I wanted to tell you many, many thanks for helping me this. Helping me. Um, This is an update on my new life. I was the frustrated wife whose husband never wanted to work, and I just wanted you to know that I moved out over a month now with my daughter into a one-bedroom apartment in Maryland, and we both are doing great. Okay, yes, this is the young lady who wanted to start her own business. Her husband rented the basement to somebody, and she um, was working all the time, paying a cell phone bill. She got her own cell phone bill, and he never wanted to do anything. But when she first met him, he was working, and she's from another country. So, yes, my husband calls and texts me all the time, but I ignore him. I am moving on with my life, and my daughter is happy as hell. Plus, my daughter got a full scholarship to Washington College and will be leaving in August. I am so proud of her. Anyway, today I need you to help me with this situation. I had a best friend from Jamaica. In fact, she was my maid of honor at my wedding. I think that was the girl I'm talking about. And I am her daughter's godmother. The child is 11, so we have been coming from, we've been coming from so far. We continued our friendship even when I came here to live. So she always asked me to find a man for her because she wants to leave Jamaica. So one day while I was filling up my car with gas, I noticed this man calling out to me. So I answered to him and he came over telling me I look lovely and if he can get my phone number. I told him straight that I was married. He said, okay, I respect that, but do you have any friends? I told him yes and I took his number. Once I reached home, I called her up and I told her, so she took his number and contacted him. Within two weeks, he bought her a ticket because she had her visa and she came up. I drove that night to the airport with balloons to meet her. We hugged and kissed and went our separate ways. She starts to come up regularly and so after six months, she called me one day crying, saying that she found out that her daughter's father was cheating on her. And I said, Susie? You cheating on him too, and you told me it was over with him. So why are you crying? So Susie, her friend, is basically cheating on her daughter's father in Jamaica with a guy in America. She gave me a whole lot of excuses that day, but because she was my friend, I listened and I tried to comfort her over the phone. The following week, she told me that she was going to quit her job and come to America to marry the guy that I hooked her up with. I said, are you sure? You've only known him for six months now. And she said to let her make her own mistake because she can't get over the fact that her baby's father um, is cheating on her. And this is way, this is her way out. I said, okay, if that's what you want, fine. So in July, while she came up in June, she called me saying that their child can't get into school and that she has to get married. And so she can get a bank account with her name on it. And the boyfriend also had to have proof of the address. I said, okay, which date are you looking to get married on? She said around the 29th or 30th of July, and she needed my help to take her around to get a dress and do her hair. I told her, sure, okay, because I work for myself and I can cancel my work for those days so I could take her on the road. I think this is the lady. <clears throat> While it was three weeks away for her wedding, one day she called me and she said, Mitzi, I want to look pretty tomorrow because I am going to see a judge. I said, Susie, are you going to get married? 
She said, no, you know we have plans for the end of the month. I said, oh, two weeks later she called me and she said she had gotten her daughter into school and I was shocked. I asked her again, Susie, did you get married? How come you got her into school? She said, no, Mitzi, I did not. The guy that she is going to marry knew someone and they got the child into school for them. I said, okay. So the week of the wedding, two days before that, I did not receive a call or anything from her. So I called her and I received no answer. The next day she called me saying that I should call her fiance because she invited her cousin to their home and he told her he liked her cousin. And I said, Susie, I will call, but what about the wedding? She said she had to put it off. And I said, are you rasshole mad? I canceled my pussy cloth work for you and I hung up. So I called the fiance and asked him what was going on. And he told me that he does not know why she's hiding it from me because they got married over three weeks ago. I nearly fainted and I had to ask him twice if it was so. He said, yes, he told her to tell me because I was the one who hooked them up together. I called her right back and told her some Ross cloth, my maid of honor, my so-called friend, because a real friend would never do that to me. As a matter of fact, I was her friend, but she never had me for her friend. Ross called Ross cloth. I think that's how you say it. She texted me the next day asking if I was mad at her, and I never answered her, and she has never called or texted me back, and that was from July 2016. So yesterday when I reached home, my daughter told me she had gotten a call from Susie and she said she went to our old home and realized we had moved and she wants to meet up with me. I am still angry every time I think about it. So I want your opinion because I know you're fair and true. I just don't think I need her back in my life. And if she calls back, I won't answer her until I hear from you. Thanks so much, April. So much love. Um, thanks so much, April. And thanks so much, love Mitzi. I just love the real talk and always look forward to another week. Stay blessed, Mitzi. So that is the lady that I did a, a, a email or a real talk on a few months ago, a couple months ago. Um, but so now her problem is she hooked her friend up, one of her, her so-called good friends from Jamaica up with this young man out here in America. And after two weeks of her hooking him up, you know, he flew her out from Jamaica and she was flying back and forth to visit him. You know, she had a visa. So her name was Susie. Susie got upset because she found out that her husband was cheating on her. But Susie was cheating on the man that Missy hooked her up with in America. Long story short, basically... Susie went ahead and said they were going to get married because she'd be her maid of honor, help her find a dress, hook her up with her hair, et cetera, et cetera. And Missy was like, yes, I will do all of that, basically. I will help you. I will do all of that. Um, she needed to get her daughter in school. So Susie lied and said, oh, I know somebody. Me and my fiance know somebody that got our daughter in school. This is what happened. Susie didn't keep her friendship valuable to Mitzi and she went ahead and got married three weeks prior to the date and didn't even tell Mitzi about it and been lying to her ever since so they haven't spoken to one another since July of 2016 which is almost two years ago so you know sometimes when you know and now Susie has went to their old home and she has gotten back in touch with Susie's daughter and she wants to meet up you know something Sometimes we have to put aside the little petty things that make us angry that's not even worth really being angry about. And I say this because it's probably been like two years that I have spoken to Robin, like 2016. Okay? And like, I don't even know why it was petty. I stopped calling her. She stopped calling me. It was petty. And you know what? Sometimes as a human being, that's what we do. We make mistakes because what are we? We're human beings and we are known and prone to making mistakes. And sometimes people just want to do things without the other's blessings or what the uh, other people's opinions. And they just feel like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do this because this is what I want to do. I can't wait. I don't want to hear anybody else's opinions. I don't want to hear what anybody else has to say. This is what I want and this is what I want and I'm going to do this and I get that that's okay that's acceptable and that's probably what her friend Susie intended but she didn't mean any harm in it and I get that but 
you know, it has been two years and Susie has reached out to you, Mitzi. She's went to try to find you and it's probably just to apologize because in her heart, she felt bad for not telling you. And I get that. I understand. We make mistakes and that's what we're known to do as human beings. And like, you know what? Life is too short to lose out on a good friendship for something that's just so minimal. It's like not even worth losing a friend. And so what I'm trying to tell you is basically... You don't really have to wait to hear from me, but I'm going to tell you this. That's your friend. Y'all been friends since Jamaica. You hooked her up with her husband. She made a mistake. I'm pretty sure you've made mistakes too in your lifespan. And why let her dwell on it and why keep dwelling on it? You know what you do? You move forward. You move past that. Because if you really are a true friend, you will still be there as a friend. And you'll reach out to her and you will rekindle your friendship and you forgive her. What she did, it might have hurt you. I get that. It probably really did hurt you internally, heartfully. You probably felt like that's not what real friends do. And true indeed, real friends don't do things like that. But true indeed, real friends do fucked up things. And then real friends do argue with one another. And then real friends do make up with one another. That's what you call a real friend. You know what I'm saying? So keep this in mind. I hope that she's still with her husband because you haven't spoken to her in almost two years. But also keep this in mind is that she has been thinking about you and she has feelings in her heart for you. That's the reason why she went to your home. Nobody just don't pop up somewhere just because on a whim. Like if you was to pop up at my door and you didn't piss me the fuck off, I might look at you like, why the fuck is you here? However, that other person on the other side of the door knows that as well. They know the wrong that they've done. Okay, but they've got the courage and they've taken the courage and the motherfucking balls to stand outside that door and be acceptable to maybe getting cursed the fuck out or getting fucked up by you on the other side. So keep that in account that your friend Susie did come there knowing that she might have got cursed out by you when you opened the door. However, lucky for her, you weren't living there no more. But she didn't know that. She was not aware of that. And so knowing that, she still put her pride aside and she tucked her balls and she walked up to your door and rang it looking for you, but you weren't there. So in my opinion, yeah, she got married without you and I'm I'm sorry for that. But you know what? There's so many more great memories to build with one another as friends that, you know what I'm saying, you have moved on and you should share that with her. Like, listen, I moved on with my life. You know what I'm saying? I have a new home and I'm happy and you can come over. We can have wine and we can drink and we can have a good time. That's what you need to open your doors up and have more friends. Life is very, very short, ladies, for real. Take advantage of the, the wonderful things that we have. Friends are a wonderful fucking thing. I tell you and I kid you not. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to be alone. You don't want to be alone. Like having friends is me. Meaningful. And like like I said, we all make mistakes. We're human beings. So that's what we're supposed to do. Ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody flawless. Like they write, they flawless makeup. No, bitch, your makeup is not flawless. Nobody's perfect neither. Nothing is perfect, okay? However, when you love somebody unconditionally, I think that's perfect, okay? And I think that good friendships are perfect. And a good, a good friendship is arguing with your friend, fighting with your friend, and making it with your friend. Because that's what real friends do. So I would definitely give her a chance and I will call her. Don't ignore her text messages and phone calls because you know in your heart, if you really didn't give two fucks, you would have sent me this email to ask me my opinion. You know deep down inside you want to talk to that bitch. So call Susie up and be her friend again. And on another note, I'm so glad that you moved out and got your own place. So congratulations to that. I know you feel so relieved, like a breath of fresh air. You can breathe again. Breathe again. I don't know the words to that song, but you guys know the song, Breathe Again. But I'm happy for you because when you leave a toxic relationship and you move on, in the beginning, it's kind of hard, but trust and believe, it gets so much easier as you go on. And then you be like, girl, why is I even bother with that low life? Trust me. It's really good to get out of a toxic relationship because you're able to grow and you're able to have your own. Yes. So now no, I got to go, you guys. I got to go to Sam's Club and do one wig video, and that's about it. But I love you guys. Stay deep and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. And I'll see you guys. What?